Welcome back to Motion Pick Recap. Today we're going to recap the science fiction and action movie titled, Source Code. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Army pilot Captain Coulter Stevens awakens aboard a train heading for Chicago, but is disoriented and uncertain as to where he is. A woman called Christina talks with him and addresses him as Sean. He's looking through the train to get a sense of where he is, and is so confused he doesn't answer the conductor asking for his ticket. When Christina assists Coulter in taking out his ticket from his pocket, he is startled. As Christina asks if something is wrong, Coulter responds that he has no idea who she is. Feeling sick, he gets up to look around, but soon comes back. While looking out the window, Coulter suddenly sees his reflection, but it's not his face. He heads for the toilet, where he sees another man in the mirror. Coulter then looks at his ID, and sees the same man. Christina is standing right outside asking if he's okay, but Coulter just replies that he doesn't know either her or the man called Sean. All of a sudden, the train explodes. Coulter awakens in a dark compartment, hearing a woman's voice saying it is beleaguered castle, asking if he's functional. The female voice wants to know what he experienced on the train and where the explosion came from. Coulter is still confused and can't answer. Instead, he asks who she is, after which she appears on a monitor, telling him he already knows. She then says she will rebuild his memory pattern and starts reading a set of words, all while imagery is showing up on the monitor. Coulter is not paying attention, trying to get out of his seat. But suddenly, he repeats a phrase automatically that pops up in his memory, after which he recalls the woman's name as Goodwin. A man called Dr. Rutledge is momentarily seen on the screen, after which Coulter requests to talk to his father. Goodwin however insists on knowing where the bomb was on the train, which Coulter doesn't know. She then tells him he will go back and has 8 minutes. Suddenly Coulter finds himself on the train again. Christina, who is in front of him, says she will take the LSAT test. Coulter then hears a soda being opened behind him, and sees a woman spilling coffee on a shoe. Coulter thinks out loud that it feels so realistic, thinking it's a simulation. He starts an 8 minute timer on his watch, and gets up. He starts to ask questions to a man beside them, and the man cracks a joke. Christina tells Coulter afterwards that the man he just talked to is a comedian. Coulter then looks around to see if he finds something suspicious. He notices a student giving back a wallet a man dropped. Suddenly, he remembers the explosion came from behind him, and goes to the toilet to search, where he is shocked to find the bomb. Thinking Goodwin can hear him, he asks for help to disarm it, but leaves it since no one answers. As the bomb had a phone detonator, he instead comes up with an idea and goes back. He pretends to be transit security and asks everyone in the railcar to turn off their electronic devices, figuring anyone who won't will be the bomber. A man doesn't close his computer, so Coulter does it for him, and then breaks his jaw. The train explodes again, and he's back in the compartment. Goodwin tells him to calm down and lower his pulse, after which she asks if he found the bomb. Coulter says he did, but wants to talk to Rutledge who he assumes is her commanding officer. Coulter believes he was in Afghanistan two days earlier, but Goodwin informs him he's been with them for two months. Coulter says he wants to exit the simulation, but Goodwin assures him it is all real and that lives are at stake. He then demands more information if he's going to continue. Goodwin asks Rutledge if she can provide more info, which she is granted. She then tells Coulter the train exploded that morning, and that Sean was on the train. The detonation occurred just as another train passed by to blow both up, and so the bomber must have been close to see it. Apparently, the bomber has planned more bombings, so Coulter needs to find out who the bomber is and is tasked to get to know the passengers. Back on the train, Christina again talks about the LSAT, and he again hears a soda can open, but he is ready for the coffee spill, which instead hits Christina's shoe, and Christina says to the one who spilled it that it's fine. Coulter remarks Christina is very kind. As the conductor passes by, Coulter asks him if he's seen anything suspicious, to which he replies Coulter's behavior is the only thing weird. He then asks Christina to sit beside him and asks if she thinks anyone seems suspicious, telling her to think of it as a game. She doesn't take him seriously and jokes around about all the people in the rail car. Finally, she tells him that he knows them all already, since he talks to them every morning. Coulter notices a guy coming out of the toilet, and asks Christina if more people have come out of it earlier, to which she responds that he himself came out of it. He starts going through Sean's stuff, but only sees a note he's made about meeting Christina for coffee. The guy walking out from the toilet gets off the train and Coulter wants to follow. He tries to get Christina with him, who says it's not their stop, but Coulter kisses her, which she seems to enjoy, and then says they should be more spontaneous. They get off and Coulter tells Christina to wait outside as he follows the man into the restroom. He makes the man uncomfortable, 
and continues following the man as he goes out. Coulter sits down beside him, asking to use his phone, which the man refuses and starts walking away. Coulter then attacks him, but suddenly the train blows up in the distance. He still thinks the man did it and tries to take his phone, but is kicked down on the tracks just as a train passes, and gets hit. He wakes up in the compartment, but neither he nor Goodwin can contact the other. The electronics and the place shuts down and Coulter starts feeling cold. Meanwhile, Goodwin's colleague sees Coulter is in trouble and they go and get Rutledge. Coulter finds some tools and manages to fix the capsule he's in. Rutledge sits down at Goodwin's computer when suddenly the contact is restored. Him and Coulter then start talking, and Rutledge explains that he is in charge and invented the machine. As Coulter tells him that he saved a woman, Goodwin gets back, who explains to him that it's outside his mission. Rutledge adds that he didn't really save her, only inside the source code. Coulter is confused about what that is, and so Rutledge explains to him. The source code is not a time machine, but rather time reassignment. It means he can only go back in a type of parallel reality, to the last eight minutes of Sean's life, who is Coulter's link, and report on what he experiences. But Coulter insists he saved Christina, and so Goodwin and Rutledge search her up to prove she's dead. Since there is a second suspected attack in the center of Chicago, but this time a dirty bomb, they need to send him back in to find the bomber. But before doing so, they tell Coulter where he can find a gun and authorizes him to use force if necessary. They send him back, and he is saddened to see Christina still being there. This time, Coulter predicts what Christina is going to say, as well as the soda, the coffee, and the ticket, before it all happens, and Christina gets somewhat bewildered that he knew what was going to happen. He gets up since he has a mission, and goes looking for the gun. As he finds it, a conductor sees him and tries to stop him. But as he points the gun at the conductor, another conductor uses a taser to stop him. He wakes up cuffed and sees Christina beside him who is confused why he was trying to get a gun. Running out of time, Coulter asks Christina what she would do if she had only one minute left to live. He himself would call his father and tell him he is sorry. As Christina says to him everything is going to be okay, the bomb detonates. Before waking up, Coulter strangely sees Christina momentarily on some plaza in a vision. When talking to Goodwin, he says the gun was a bad idea, and requests to speak with his father. She just tells him she will try to get his father later. Coulter then asks how good he is doing, thinking that Goodwin once did what he himself is doing right now. While she explains she never did it because the qualifications are extremely specific, Coulter sees her military patch. She then tells him they are running out of time and tasks him to search through passengers' belongings. He is sent back in and makes a drawing of the patch he saw. Christina walks up to him and Coulter asks her to investigate what happened to one of his friends in the military that disappeared in Afghanistan two months ago, whose name is Captain Coulter Stevens. While she goes to do it, Coulter suspects a man and starts going through his bag. Finding nothing, he then notices a woman that has a bag from a military medical center, and goes to ask her about the patch. She tells him the letters stand for Air Force and the N for Nellis. He borrows her phone and calls Nellis Air Force Base, asks for Rutledge and tells them it's Captain Coulter Stevens calling. While waiting for Rutledge to pick up, Christina returns, telling him his friend was killed in action two months ago. Suddenly, he gets flashbacks of Afghanistan, and he hears Goodwin reading the set of words to rebuild his memory pattern. He wakes up and immediately asks Goodwin if he is dead since he found out inside the source code that he died in a helicopter crash, and that his father received a medal for him. Goodwin then begins to explain that a part of his brain is still functioning, but that his body is not. Confused, Coulter asks if he is just imagining seeing his body, which Goodwin confirms. As he's asking if the capsule he is inside also is a manifestation, the compartment starts to transform. When asking where his real body is, Goodwin doesn't tell him. Rutledge cuts in and tells him they must find a bomb. Coulter then asks if Rutledge received the call he made from the train, but Rutledge explains that even if he did get the call, it would have been an entirely different Rutledge in another reality. Coulter tells him that nothing of this can be legal. But Rutledge explains that the military court sanctioned the project, and tells him other wounded soldiers would see it as an honor to take his place, and both continue to live and serve their country. Coulter says many soldiers just want to serve their country once, and Rutledge promises to terminate him as soon as the mission is over. They then send him back over and over without rest in between to find the bomber. As Coulter tells Rutledge he can't do it anymore, Rutledge plays a recording of his father making a speech at his funeral. After hearing his father, Coulter tells them to send him back in. He instantly goes for the gun, and then the bomb. He successfully removes the detonator phone and calls the last number in its log while walking through the train. As someone answers, he tells the person on the other end to turn around. 
But another passenger on the phone beside him hears him and turns around. Coulter then threatens him with the gun, but the man convinces Coulter to call again since he was just talking to his wife. As he does, another phone rings outside the train and Coulter apologizes for his mistake and rushes out. He sees the suspect throw something into the train. Coulter goes over, and finds out it is the man's wallet and ID, seeing the man's name is Derek Frost. The door closes behind him, and Coulter has to use an emergency door release and jumps out from the moving train. He sees Derek at a van and runs up to him, showing the detonator phone, which Derek pretends he's never seen. He knows Derek is the bomber however, and so they open the van and Coulter sees the bomb. When he asks Derek where his next target is, Christina suddenly appears and Derek shoots both of them. As Coulter is bleeding out, Derek explains that he is doing all this to make the world better, but because the world is hell, someone has to destroy it before it can be rebuilt. Derek then leaves in his van. Soon after, Coulter hears the train blow up even though he removed the phone detonator. On his way back to Beleaguered Castle, Coulter now sees the visions of Christina on the plaza more clearly. Once back, he informs Rutledge and Goodwin about Derek Frost and the number plate on his van, as well as confirms the bomb is radioactive. Goodwin congratulates him, and before they go, Coulter requests to be sent back to the train once more to save the people, even though Rutledge says it won't work. Soon after, a SWAT team manages to arrest Derek and prevent the second bomb from detonating. Afterwards, Goodwin goes back to talk with Coulter. Coulter thinks Rutledge won't send him back. He also tells her there must have been a second trigger on the bomb since it went off even though he removed the detonator phone. He then asks Goodwin to let him get 8 minutes and save the people on the train, and then to switch off his life support. She tells him he won't be able to change the past, but Coulter replies to her that she is wrong. She says she will ask Rutledge if she can send him back in, but he begs her to do it without permission, and after some consideration, she agrees, expresses her gratitude for his service, and tells him she will terminate him after 8 minutes. She sends him in, and for the final time, Coulter is back on the train. He starts a pleasant conversation with Christina and asks her out for coffee, which she happily accepts. He asks her to give him just a few minutes so that he can go and save the world, after which he rushes to the bomb and removes both the first and second detonator. He passes Derek on his way out, commenting it's a beautiful day, and then steals a handcuff from a conductor. Meanwhile, Goodwin walks into Rutledge's office, and Rutledge tells her they should do a memory swipe on Coulter so they can continue using him. But Goodwin is not prepared to betray Coulter. In the train, Coulter grabs Derek when he tries to get off the train, handcuffing him to a metal bar, and shows him the detonator phones, saying it's all over. He then uses one of them to call the police and tells them about Derek and the bomb in the van. Before leaving him, Coulter takes Derek's smartphone and uses it to send a message to Goodwin. He then calls his father, saying that he's a friend of Coulter's and that he was there when Coulter died. He then tells his father that Coulter wanted to say he was sorry. His father says he wished he could have told Coulter that he loved him very much, to which he responds that, Coulter knows it. Simultaneously, Goodwin goes into a room and opens the enclosed chamber where Derek's body is kept. Rutledge finds out and brings MPs with him to stop her, but can't get into the room. On the train, Coulter manages to convince the comedian to crack some jokes to make people laugh in the train. He then takes Christina's hand and leads her to the back of the railcar and asks what she would do if she only had one minute left to live. She answers she'd make those seconds count, and Coulter kisses her. At that same second, Goodwin turns his life support off, and Coulter dies before the MPs get in. On the train, we see all the passengers laughing, having a good time. The moment passes and they are all still alive, and Coulter says to Christina that, everything is gonna be okay. In the last scene, Coulter and Christina get off the train in Chicago and walk to the AT&T Plaza with the Cloud Gate sculpture, all of which Coulter now realizes were in his visions from the very beginning. Bewildered and amazed, he asks Christina if she believes in destiny. Finally, we see Goodwin receive an email containing the set of words to rebuild the memory pattern, explaining that the source code works better than they could have ever imagined, and asking her to tell Captain Coulter Stevens when he wakes up, that everything is gonna be okay. The end. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and hit the like button to help us out. Until next time, take care.